Hi guys, I wanted to just show you uh, a little bit uh, an introduction to redox chemistry. So um, essentially redox chemistry is the way that batteries work. It's the way that our bodies metabolize things. Um, it's really fundamentally important in pretty much every aspect of existence. So I just wanted to share with you the beginning discussion of how redox chemistry works. So you've heard of single replacement reactions or single displacement reactions. Those both mean the same thing. And as it turns out, there's a third name. We sometimes call those reactions redox reactions. And these are things that you see all the time. The reason Mars is red is because it had a whole bunch of iron on it that was oxidized and it becomes red like this rust here. Okay, so um, essentially this can happen whenever two metals of different activities are touching each other. So the point of uh, this discussion today is to explain some vocabulary to you and also allow you to predict when two metals in contact with each other might react. Sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. Um, so a simple example here of redox chemistry is, is just using iron, which of course is Fe. And since that's the element, it has no charge, um, it's a solid. Um, and let's say uh, oxygen is your other reactant. That's of course a gas. It's an element also, so the charge on that is zero as well. If you put these two things together, every New Yorker knows this because we have it happen all the time every winter to our vehicles. If you put these two things together, you get iron oxide as one of the possible products. This is, this is red. It's the solid that forms in your fenders. Also right here, right? that's iron two oxide to be very specific. So it's iron, sorry, iron three oxide is the red one. Iron two oxide is actually black. You can actually see some little bits of it in various places, but iron three oxide is the simple one. So we'll go with that for now. Um, so just to review balancing reactions, I have two iron. I always like to start with the metals. It makes it easier. So two iron on this side, one on this side. So I'm gonna add a two. I have three oxygen here and two oxygen here. Those two things don't really go together. So I have to make, uh, I have to double the odd one. So we're gonna get six, which means I'm gonna go back to the iron and change that. Okay, so if I have two as a subscript and two as a coefficient, I have a total of four iron over here. So I need four on that side. I have two times three oxygen, so six. That means I need a three there to make this a properly balanced reaction. Okay, so far that's review. Nothing new has uh, been presented yet. So the next thing to notice is that charges are changing in a single displacement reaction. When we look at double displacement reactions, um, you have two compounds and they just swap places. Everything remains the same charge afterward, but that's different from a single displacement. So here we have elements that have zero charge and then they come together as a compound, okay? Um, it's a good chance to review if you pause the video right now and see if you can tell me what the charges of the iron and the oxygen are in the compound. I already gave you one of them. The, uh, so the oxygen is always a minus two and the iron in this case has to be uh, plus three. And the reason that it has to be is because you have three of the oxygens that are each negative two. And we have two of whatever iron happens to be. And it's gonna add up to zero because compounds typically have no charge. There's no charge written up in the upper right hand corner here. So that's where I got the zero from. So then it just becomes like an algebra statement, right? And so we add six to each side and then we divide by two. So you get X equals positive three from doing that. Okay, so what we notice is we started, both reactants start with zero charge and they end up with plus three and minus two. So whenever you have a redox reaction, they're always gonna be paired together. And so what's actually happening here is the iron is going from a charge of zero to a charge of plus three. That of course is an increase in charge. 
okay? The, that means in order to become a plus three, it has to get rid of three electrons, okay? So it loses three electrons. So it, that's a cation, it's positive. So when we lose three electrons, we can write that as a product. We're giving, giving them away to someone else. The oxygen, on the other hand, it starts off at a zero and it, it becomes a minus two. So each oxygen accepts two electrons. I have two oxygens, so that means I'm gonna need four here. So each oxygen accepts two electrons. That means they're gonna have to split apart. They can't stay connected anymore. So we put the subscript in the front. And then uh, the fact that we've each gained two electrons means we have a two minus charge. Okay, so that means it gains two electrons per oxygen and the charge decreased. Okay, so whichever way the charge goes really helps us to figure out whether it's an oxidation or a reduction. And this reaction, this process here of writing them out separately, you guys are never gonna have to do this. It just helps me to explain how this is happening. But um, when the, charge goes from zero to plus three, that's an increase. We call that an oxidation. So we would say the iron was oxidized, okay? When the charge goes from zero to minus two, that's a decrease, so it's reduced. Literally, the, the charge is reduced. That's where the name comes from. Okay, so... Um, A quick reminder of finding oxidation states. This is generally um, available on your periodic table, either the front, which looks like this, or it's gonna be available on the back, okay? And so in the version that we hand out in class, it should be a green cardstock one. This corner of each box tells you the charge. Some metals have multiple charges like iron. And in that case, you have to look at what it's attached to. So the one I just gave you was attached to three oxygens. Um, that means it had to be the plus three version. But that little box on your periodic table says it could be a plus two also. So with the metals, it's especially important to figure out what it's attached to to find the charge. With the nonmetals, it's almost always this first number listed in the upper right hand corner. That's because the nonmetals tend to share electrons, which means if we just count across, we can figure like that oxygen has six valence electrons. So it's going to become um, oxygen two minus because it wants to get to eight and it only has six, right? So that's why it's a minus two. So that's how um, our prior discussion about, about the way that ionic compounds are formed comes in. Okay, so one of my favorite redox reactions is called the thermite reaction, and I actually got to see this not that long ago, just outside of Little Falls. They were repairing, um, they were repairing a, a railroad tie, so that's the metal part of the railroads, and you can't just uh, pick them up and go take them into a factory and repair them. You have to repair them at the railroad site, and one of the things they do is take out broken rails and replace them. Um, so to replace them, you have to weld it back together. And it turns out that railroad ties are really thick. Um, they absorb a lot of heat. So it takes a really, really hot reaction to make this happen. And so what they do is they set up a special um, kind of mold that ties together these two pieces by melting them. All right. And so the reaction is called thermite. And it's pretty cool. It's just using two elements, iron, which is, of course, a solid. Um, is is the first one, and you're going to use aluminum oxide. Now these are our products, okay? So we're trying to make the iron so that it will weld. Um, it'll weld the pieces of railroad metal together, which are made mostly of iron. Um, so if that's our products, then we need to, we need to figure out the reactants and, the, and that's going to be the aluminum as a metal and iron three oxide like that. So this reaction is not balanced. Um, you pause the video, try to balance it yourself. Okay. 
So we need to have the, the process is going to be, we're going to put two iron here. I need two aluminum, so I'll put a two there. Um, that means I have two of each metal on both sides, and then I have three oxygen. So that's how we're going to balance this guy. So in order to figure out what's being oxidized and what's being reduced, we have to calculate the charges. So the metals are always zero. So that's these two guys. And then we just did this for the Fe203. So you already know that oxygen's always a minus two when it's in a compound. And that fact oops, gets us the same equation we just did. So X is three here. So each iron has a charge of three on the left. We have to do the same thing over here, but also if you look at the periodic table, you'll see that iron is always a plus three. So I don't actually need to write any algebra to figure that out. Um, it's either a plus three when it's in a compound or it's zero. Those are the only two choices for iron. Okay, so pause the video again and see if you can figure out which, which thing is being oxidized and which thing is being reduced. Okay, so remember, just a reminder, that the thing being oxidized, the, um, the charge is going to go up. And the thing being reduced, the charge goes down. Right? So if I have a reduced bank balance, that's because I, I like spent my money, right? So reduced goes down. Oxidized goes up. Okay, so aluminum is going from zero to plus three. That's going up. So aluminum is being oxidized. Iron goes from plus three to zero. That's going down. So that means that the iron ion in this case is being um, reduced. So you could also write that the Fe2O3 is being reduced. Both of those would be acceptable answers. Okay. So that's what the word oxidized and reduction means. So to continue, the, the next concept we're going to look at is the activity series. So I promised that you would learn how to tell when two metals in contact are going to actually cause a reaction because not every combination of metals would, okay? This activity series is going to allow us to do that. And so basically, if I'm comparing that same reaction of the aluminum, which is right here, with the iron, which is right here, what we see is that the metal we were reacting is above the ion, okay? So this says, any metal in the series can be oxidized by any metal ions below it. So this tells us that the aluminum being, that's the metal, being above the ion, it will react, okay? If I tried to take, say, the iron ion and react it with nickel, that would be no reaction because what has to to be true is the metal has to be above the ion in this activity series for it to react, okay? So let's say I wanted to produce copper, okay, for some reason, I don't know why. Maybe I need it for jewelry or whatever. Um, if I want to produce copper, I have to choose an ion that's below it, okay? So silver, mercury, platinum, or gold. The problem with that is, the re one of the reasons that copper is expensive is because these metals are either really toxic, mercury, or really expensive, like silver, platinum, and gold are really expensive. So finding a redox reaction that makes copper is a little bit of a challenge, okay? But if I had a piece of copper, it reacts with a whole lot of things, okay? If I had the copper ion, it'll react with anything above it. So that's good news, okay? Um, so I just take a second, pause the video, and predict whether FeCl2 and magnesium are going to react, and then do the same thing for the aluminum and copper example. OK, so the iron 2 plus FeCl2 is right there, and the magnesium is right here. So yes, that's going to react because the metal is above the ion. Aluminum and 
So aluminum Cl3, so that's the ion, it's in the compound. And copper will not react because the copper element is below the aluminum ion. Okay, so we don't want you to memorize this series. You're gonna have it um, when you take your exams, but you should at least understand how to use it. You're looking for the metal, the element, to be above the ion in the series. Okay, so kind of as a summary, um, I remember the pattern here with this phrase Leo says, GER. So it means loss of electrons is oxidation. And recall that oxidation happens when the charge goes up, okay? And then GER stands for gain of electrons is reduction. And so we can tell something has gained electrons when the charge goes down. Um, okay, so that's the way I remember it. Leo says GER. So I have this picture of a line in my brain and, it, and I have to sort of connect it with what's happening in, in the reaction. They always exist together. You can't have a reduction without an oxidation um, and vice versa. So that's, that's an important concept here, okay? I have this cheat sheet in Chem 111. I don't necessarily expect people to, to memorize this, but if you are struggling with identifying um, charges of compounds, this is one way to do it. Um, if you like rules, okay, so you can kind of practice it. So this is kind of the summary. Um, but really the same practice that you've been doing with making ionic compounds is going to help you out with this stuff. Okay, so here's a visual representation of the same rules. If you like this, then feel free to use it. If it doesn't make sense to you, then don't use it, it's okay. Um, but you do need to be able to predict what number of each atom is gonna combine into a compound and also the charges that they're going to have, okay? So once again, quick review. If we're having something go from the element sodium into the ion of sodium, that's going from zero to one, zero to one is an increase in charge. So that means it's an oxidation and it lost electrons. If something goes from plus three to plus two, that's from plus three to plus two, that's going down, so that's a reduction, which means it gained electrons, okay? The last two vocab words involve traveling. Not really, I wish, we all wish we could travel. But in this case, we're using a phrase agents, okay? And so like, if you go to a travel agent, they are gonna cause you to travel, okay? So agents cause something else to happen. They aren't experiencing travel themselves. So when I say travel agent, it doesn't mean that, that it's a person who is traveling all around the world, right? Okay. So again, a, a chance here to practice identifying oxidation states if you'd like to pause the video. I'm just gonna do it real quick and um, you can check your work. Okay, um, so first, that's the first step. We have to have a balanced reaction to identify oxidation numbers with. Then we look at for what is being oxidized, meaning the charge goes up, and what is being reduced. If you write it enough, it'll stick in your brain, okay? So we, we use the, ooh, I got those backwards. I read them backwards. I hope you didn't write that down yet. Okay, so if it's being reduced, the charge goes down. If it's being oxidized, the charge goes up, okay? So if you write them enough, it'll stick in your head. Now that we have oxidation numbers, we can notice that the calcium goes from zero to plus two, and the hydrogen started out as plus one, and it went to zero, this hydrogen. The other one didn't do anything, so I'm just ignoring it. Okay, so hydrogen goes from plus one to zero, that's uh, down. So hydrogen went down in charge, that means it's reduced. While the calcium went from zero to plus two, so that's up, that means it was oxidized. Now ask yourself the question, which one loses electrons, which one gains electrons? You should be able to answer that. The answer is this one loses and the hydrogen gains. Okay. Um, to figure out which agent each thing is, 
we have to think about what it's causing. So I told you these things go hand in hand. So if the hydrogen is being reduced, it causes something else to be oxidized. Similarly, since the calcium is being oxidized, it's causing something else, in this case, the hydrogen, to be reduced. Okay, so those are our two kind of conclusions here. And so if the calcium is oxidized, it's causing reduction, which means it's the reducing agent. And then up here, if the hydrogen is being reduced, it is the oxidizing agent. Okay, they feel backwards, but they're not because again, the word agent means to cause something. So if I experience a reduction, I have caused something else to be oxidized um, because I took their electrons basically. All right, so then to summarize, try to pause and figure, figure out what the answer to these two questions at the bottom are. So oxidizing agents have a reduced oxidation state, a charge, a reduced charge. The charge on the H plus went from zero, a plus one to zero, which is reduction. Um, that means that the reducing agent have an increase in charge, okay? So that's kind of the crux of it, a really quick primer on how to figure out what's reacting and um, using the vocab words reduction, oxidation, um, and reducing agent, re oxidizing agent. Okay. Hopefully that answers any questions you have, but as always, feel free to reach out if it doesn't.